Man, it sucks that the Leafs lost that one. What? No, no, the St. Pat's lost that one. Oh, is that how it works? That's how I'm spinning it? Yeah. And what about the point for the overtime loss? Oh, no, no, the Leafs get that. Hi, everyone. Oh, <laughs> come on! The Leafs won a Austin Matthews! Matt Bodo, what's your drink? And well, time for a redo. The team is ruining my life! The Toronto St. Pat's half win. Ah, they lose two to one in overtime to the Chicago Blackhawks. Typical friggin' Leafs. They had a lead and they blew it, like always. Allowed someone to score their first NHL goal, like always. And leave me sad and depressed, like uh, <laughs> at least that's what I saw some people saying on Twitter. They were so upset. Oh my goodness, typical Leafs, and they lost on Saturday night. Ruin my weekend. But here's what I say. That's an honest loss. You're gonna lose games in this league. That's the thing about the NHL. It's full of a bunch of good hockey teams. And if you're gonna lose, I think you wanna have fewer 7-2 losses to the Panthers and more one goal losses in overtime where you at least get a point against the Chicago Blackhawks. The Leafs have had two heartbreaking losses against the Blackhawks this season. The first one was in Chicago. They're up too late. And guess what? Cough that up and they lose. They get the loser point. This one, on home ice hockey night in Canada, green jerseys, everyone's festive. You have a barn burner of an overtime. It's so much fun. You're going to go to the shootout and Lord knows you're due to win one of those and guess what? You lose with 17 seconds left. Loser point. And that's true. And you shouldn't settle but, just saying, the Leafs pulled two of a possible four points against the Blackhawks this season. That's okay, I take that. Which kind of takes the sting out of only getting two of four against the Avalanche. No, no, no. Steve, it was a good game. The Leafs look great. Didn't they look great in this one? The same Pats look great, I'm sorry. And I knew this was going to be a hard one to watch. Not because it's the Blackhawks, not because I have this overwhelming feeling of dread because they're green. When I'm watching hockey, my brain is trained to cheer for like two jerseys, Canada and the Leafs. The blue for the Jays, the red and white for the Raps. Your brain goes on autopilot and sometimes they'll wear an alternate jersey and your brain has to readjust a little, but you still get it and you know who you're cheering for. The Leafs put on these white and green jerseys and I'm like, yeah, go Leafs or St. Pat's or whatever. But my brain is just like, you're not Ron. So I had difficulty getting into this game, not because it wasn't entertaining, but because I'm weird. But you know who didn't have trouble getting into this game? Austin Matthews, Austin Matthews. Coming into this game, Matthews is on a ridiculous, pointless and goalless drought and everyone's all pissed off. Has Austin Matthews hit a wall again? And hockey players are funny because I think everyone was trying to downplay the streak. Like I'm sure if if you were to ask the players, you know, oh, how do you feel about the point of the streak? Well, you know, it's a little frustrating, but you know, it's just not about the individual numbers you certainly want to be producing, but at the end of the day, it's all about those two points, and if we get the win, I'm happy. Until William Nylander feeds you a six saucer pass and you bury it to make it one nothing. Yeah! Matthews always seems so calm and reserved in interviews, and then when you see him, ah! crazy goal celebration you're like oh he took it there and he was that jacked up to put the Leafs up one nothing with like 90% of the game to play oh he wants the two points but you know that felt good and by the way Austin Matthews puts the St. Pats up one nothing after one heading into the second period now I'm not gonna say that losing 7-2 to the Panthers is a good thing because it's not but the Leafs have had a few pretty brutal losses this season and for the most part they've actually responded to them really well and in this game and against the Lightning the Leafs weren't perfect defensively by any means, but they limited the really, really high quality scoring chances. And Freddie looked good, and the Leafs gave Freddie a chance to look good. Except for halfway through the second period. Odd man rush, John Hayden coming in, he doesn't have a career NHL goal, so guess what? That's going in, but I, I mean, that's not Leafs voodoo, that's, that's just his own doing. What a great shot. First NHL goal and a beauty. It's tied game 1-1. Now I saw someone tweet during the game, you know, where do the Blackhawks find these guys? You know, scores his first NHL goal and his second NHL game. The guy looks really good. Third round pick in 2013, but where do they find these guys? And then you see the assists are Seabrook and Taves and you go, oh, that's where they find them. What the Blackhawks have done so well for damn near a decade, and I wrote about this in the latest trade tree. You can check out that link underneath. What the Blackhawks have done so well is finding players spare parts, cheap young spare parts, and making them work. Surrounding them with star power certainly helps. And as we learned earlier in the season with Richard Ponick, weirdly, if you put a guy on one of the Blackhawks' top two lines, they're able to get a couple points. Again, that's not to take anything away from John Hayden, but they're really good at it. Game continues, we head into second intermission and into the third period. The Blackhawks are out shooting the Leafs, but I think the scoring chances, the really, really good ones, are about the same. Freddy bobbles a puck, that almost goes in. Puck bounces off Marchenko and it's on the goal line! Riley clears it, that almost went in. Nylander crossbar, that almost went in. Matthews butt into Crawford stick, that almost went in. Matthews 
could have had a hat trick in this one and tied Wendell Clark's rookie goal scoring record for the Leafs. Instead, we'll have to settle for a hat trick against the Bruins where Matthews will break it. And as the game winds down, it actually winds down and we just go to overtime. The strangest thing in this one, with I think one exception with about five minutes to go, the Leafs didn't really panic. The Leafs didn't really get themselves into too many situations where the Blackhawks were just Harlem Globetrotters and holding on to the puck and there was nothing the Leafs could do about it. Too often in the final minutes of games we have seen just fire drills from the Leafs. Didn't really get that in this one. They were one shot shy of giving up 40 shots, but you know. So now, it's overtime. Blackhawks, loaded team. You know what? So are the Leafs. And Blackhawks not as loaded for this one because they don't have Marion Hossa. Heading into this game, I'm, I'm in my car on the way to watch the game, and I hear, oh, Marion Hossa isn't playing. I go, yes! Steve, did you just cheer that an opposing player was injured? N no, I cheered that an opposing player was not playing against my team. That's different. He's not playing because he's injured. You're a terrible person. No, you know what? You're right. I, I wish Hossa was in the Blackhawks lineup. Uh, ultimately, you want to beat a team at their best, and that means all hands on deck. Wow, you really think that? Absolutely not. Moral conundrum. JVR was with a breakaway! Oh, come on! Of course not! Question of the game. Do the Leafs lead the league in overtime breakaways that amount to nothing? Matthews has had a bunch this season. Marner had a, had a breakaway in the first period. JVR had one in overtime. I thought Michael Grabner was on the Rangers now. Well, it's okay. It looks like it's going to go to the shootout. And I actually got a good feeling about this one, okay? The Leafs are due. 20 seconds left in overtime. Hawks 2 on 1. Oh, poop. Artemi Panarin comes in. Ryan Hartman shoots and scores, and the Blackhawks win in overtime. And that's when I learned that I don't know the offside rule. You know what I've noticed a lot this season is a goal will get scored, a call will happen, fans will be upset, and someone actually has to tweet out the written rule, and that's what we had to get in this one. And it's hard to know each and every rule of the game, and it's not exactly a common thing for a player to enter the zone with the puck behind them. I have played video games early on when they kind of introduced the skill stick, you could carry the puck behind you and if you cross the blue line that way it was offside. That is of course a video game. The argument here is Artemi Panarin had possession of the puck when he crossed the blue line and I'm like yeah but it looked to me like he might have started the pass before the puck crossed the blue line. Babcock had no problem with it uh, and I guess he wants the points even more than I do. That's not true. He wants them just as much. So if it's fine with him I'm okay with it. The one that did tick me off though was the since missed too many men on the ice call against the Blackhawks that could have gone against the Blackhawks in overtime. But it was a game full of those. Taves wanted a hold called. Kadri high stick someone in the face. You know what? A high intensity low scoring game with a high pace and a bunch of nastiness and a bunch of missed calls and a controversial ending? Dare I say... Kind of seemed like a playoff game. Blackhawks fans, I'll let you help me with that because I I, I don't know. Because I haven't seen one since 2004. And if you're going, Steve, what about 2013? No, men in black, I forget all about it. And here's another reason why getting one point off the Blackhawks is awesome. The Tampa Bay Lightning lose in regulation. The Islanders lose in overtime, so they get a point. So the Leafs, playing against one of the best teams in the league, they break even, they stay a point up, they stay in a playoff spot, and they stay with a game in hand. It was the Leafs' most crucial game of the season until next game, which is the most crucial game of the season. And let me ask you this, question of the game. So, let's assume Leafs make the playoffs, okay? We don't know that they will, but let's assume. Now let's assume it's the second wild card spot they get. They could still catch the Bruins, but let's assume it's the second wild card spot. I've heard some people say, you know, why should the Leafs make the playoffs if they're just going to get their ass kicked in the first round? Probably gonna play Washington if they get the second wild card. You know what? If I can get into Mike Babcock's brain, there he's he's got a real good brain. It's real good. This season has been a pleasant surprise. It's been exciting, but it's been an evaluation period. You want to see what these players are made of. If they get their asses kicked in the first round, fine. I just want to see what they're made of, and I want them to see what playoff hockey is like against an amazing opponent. Imagine the Leafs finally make the playoffs and it's a great story and they're feeling all good about themselves and then they go up against Washington and get their show run. And even though you can be proud of the way your regular season ended, you go, oh, there's another gear there that we need to reach. There's another level. The Blackhawks had experiences like that. The Penguins had experiences like that. The 80s Oilers had experiences like that. And coming into the game, so many people were like, oh, the Leafs remind me of the Blackhawks nine years ago. I'm not saying that because the Leafs haven't earned that yet. But there was a time where all the teams I just mentioned hadn't earned that yet either. I want this team battle tested and I can't wait to see what they turn into. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends there is a trade tree down below, like I said. And I will see you next time. Boston.